here I can clearly show you in daytime the warning signs of a tentacle lurking below the surface. Watch carefully. See the tentacle bulge? Yep, it bulged. Welcome! I'm Boogerlicious. Struggling to play Don't Starve Together? I'm here to help. All playable characters have a different instrument as their voice, and they all interact with items and mobs differently. I highly recommend right-clicking on items and creatures to get a sense for the characters. I linked the DST wiki link below if you want to check out more information about each character. First off, three characters are only unlockable through purchasing or weaving with spools. I've labeled them for you here. The rest are all automatically available to you when you open the game for the first time. I'll give you a brief character overview right now. All the characters have different traits. I've scaled these based on a beginner player's ability to interact with the world, eat most foods available, and balance of character stats. If you're interested in a video about all the characters' pros and cons, comment below and like the video so I know you're interested. So easy characters to start off playing with are Wilson, Wendy, and Walter. Easy-ish character is Willow. Easy to medium characters are Wirt, Wickerbottom, and Winona. Medium difficulty characters are Wigfred, Weber, WX78, and medium to hard characters are Wartox, Maxwell, Wolfgang, and Woody. Hard characters are Warly and Wormwood. An extremely hard character is Wes. This is the starting menu. It's what you see when you first load up the game. I highly recommend host a game to play on solo to learn the basics before playing on a server with others. DST is a very challenging game, and as a newbie it's easy to just hang out at the base and eat all the food others have gathered and crafted, and that's not a great way to make new friends. We are choosing the social play style, which will generate a random map that's less challenging than the other options. Change the server name if you like. The best game mode for beginners is Endless. That way you can respawn easily with a hit point penalty and not affect other sanity or deal with permadeath. Change the player number to 1, which will automatically make the game local and invisible on the server list. I recommend keeping all the forest and or cave settings as they are. If you want a video about quality of life or decorative mods, comment below and like the video so I know you're interested. If I receive enough comments or likes on this video, it'll tell me you want more DST videos in the future. After the game loads in, you'll see a character selection screen. This outlines all the character stats for hunger, sanity, and hit points. Things they enter into the constant with, which is what the game world is called, and some bullet points about their pros and cons. Again, the wiki linked below outlines things in more detail, and if there's enough interest, I may record a video later with more information about each character. Today we'll be playing with Wilson. I like him as a starting character because he doesn't have any debuffs like some others, and his beard helps him stay warmer in cooler weather. This is the Florid Postern, where you spawn into a randomly generated world for the first time, and the place where you can respawn easily if you die in endless mode. Let's review the user interface. On the left side bar, that contains all of your craftable recipes. In order from top to bottom, the tabs are titled Tools, Light, Survival, Science, Fight, and Dress. Notice how they all have a beige background right now. That means you don't have anything in your inventory to craft yet. I just picked up a seed. You can eat these, but I recommend saving them for farming later. WASD on your keyboard moves you around. Spacebar will pick up things when you're near them. Or you can left click on the item. Always pick berry bushes when you see them. The game is called Don't Starve after all. You'll see collected items in your hotbar slash inventory slots at the bottom of the screen. The upper right hand corner displays different meters, hunger, sanity, and hit points. The dial at the very top displays day cycles, daytime, evening, and nighttime. You want to keep an eye on those while you're playing. 
Focus on collecting sticks, grass, and flint for crafting. Gather berries and seeds as you see them. You can pick carrots, but just know they take 20 days to respawn. Hear that bell sound? Look at your left crafting bar. The light tab turned green. That means you can craft something. See how the torch icon is lit up now? You have enough grass and twigs to make a torch. This is very important. You always want enough grass and twigs or grass and wood to make a light source at night. The torch has durability, so only have it out when you need it at night. Stay in the starter biome until you have enough resources to craft at least a torch and until you have some berries and or carrots to eat later. Not all biomes will have sticks, grass, or flint and you'll need these items come nightfall. Once you've gathered enough sticks and flint, craft an axe for wood and a pickaxe for stone. Ideally, you have extra flint, sticks, and grass left over since your tools and torch have durability. They will break and need replacing. That sound alert indicates that it is now evening time. So if you look in the upper right hand corner again, you'll see that in the day cycle we are now in the red section. That's a reminder that you need to be ready for nightfall. You'll also notice that your sanity is starting to slowly drain. This always happens in the evening. When I chop trees, I always go for the largest of their growth cycle. Each tree has four growth cycles and you get the best yield of wooden seeds when you chop the largest stage. These are birch nut trees and they drop edible seeds. However, the seeds can only be eaten when they're cooked over a fire. The map can be accessed by the icon in the lower right hand corner or by pressing M on your keyboard. You'll notice that only a small area is revealed. This is everywhere you've gone so far. Luckily, for those of you who get lost as easily as I do, you can always locate the spawn zone, the florid postern, by the spiral icon on the map. These are evergreen trees. They drop wood and pine cones. I recommend always keeping some pine cones in your inventory. You'll find out why later. These are houses for pigs. They're one of the mobs you'll encounter in the game. There are lots of mobs in the game. They are passive, neutral, or aggressive. If you're interested in a video discussing the various mobs, let me know in the comments and press the thumbs up button so I know you're interested in more DST videos. Edible items in your inventory have a green background. They all have different spoil timers. Here I've inserted a graph from the DST wiki explaining the benefits and repercussions of eating food at different stages. The spoil mechanics are shown based on the item's background color. Green equals fresh, yellow equals stale, and red equals spoiled. If uneaten or uncooked, spoiled food will eventually change to rot. When that happens, keep rot. You'll definitely need it later. You can refresh food by a bit by cooking it on a fire. Red may change back to yellow if it's not just about to rot, or yellow may change back to green, but it'll never fully refresh unless cooked into a different meal item in a crock pot. I can discuss the crock pot in a future video. If you're interested, let me know below. Uh-oh, check the day cycle in the upper right. Nighttime is here. As darkness falls, whip out a torch. Or you can put down a fire, which can also be found under the light tab if you have wood and grass in your inventory. Wielding a torch, you can continue to unlock the map and pick items. Make sure to use your right mouse button or space bar unless you want to burn the whole world down with your torch. Look at this. We found our first set piece. Set pieces can sometimes be skeletons with a random crafted item or raw material nearby. They won't be visible on the map unless the set piece includes specific turfs. This set piece comes with a fire dart. Hooray free items! Other set pieces can contain statues, clockwork mobs, and more. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like a video about various set pieces and like the video. Without your valuable feedback, I won't know whether people want more content like this. These sleepy critters are beefalo. They poop regularly and the turds are a valuable resource. Make sure to pick it up when you see it. And that little tippy tapper was a spider, which can later be fought for other valuable resources. I don't recommend fighting anything until you craft armor and a weapon, but luckily in endless mode, you can die and respawn often. So experiment. DST is one of those games where you die to learn something new especially since you can't see the mob's health bars. 
As I keep mentioning, the wiki link below is also a great resource if you want a little extra help navigating this brutal world. We just found some boulders. The ones I'm looking for have little yellow streaks in them. Those contain gold, stone, and flint. These ones contain stone, flint, and niter. Since I don't need niter right now, I'm passing these by. Here we find a pig in their natural habitat. I quite like them. And here's a frog. You can see their disposition is much different from the pig. They're fierce for their tiny stature. When they hit you, they also knock one item out of your inventory. It's always from your far left slot, so I recommend keeping a stack of sticks or stone or another raw material there instead of a tool. It can be quite annoying if a frog hits you multiple times and knocks all your tools onto the ground. We found gold! Hooray! These boulders are very important. Harvest as many of them as you can. You'll go through multiple pickaxes, but it'll be worth it. You only get one or rarely two gold pieces from each boulder. It's a great way to replenish your flint stash, and the stone is also very important for crafting. Get picking and gathering, my friend! I'm going to set up a science machine now. This is a critical moment in your playthrough. Materials needed for a science machine are gold, wood, and stone. You'll notice new light bulb icons on some of your tabs. If you open the tab, unlockable items will show up with a light bulb icon next to them. You can only prototype these when next to a science machine or alchemy engine. The first item I'm crafting is a backpack, an extension for your inventory that pops up on the right hand side. Once you've prototyped that item once, you'll be able to craft it again in your current playthrough without being next to a machine. Based on a friend's suggestion, I like to put my edible items in my backpack. So if I die and my backpack drops, nearby mobs won't take any of my food. Notice how new tabs appear when you're next to the science machine. These are tabs that have entirely locked items. By crafting them once by the science machine, like I mentioned before, You'll be able to craft them again anytime and anywhere later. See that little gift icon that just appeared at the upper left of your screen? It lights up with a sound effect when near a science machine, but when you walk away it turns gray. This is one of the most appealing aspects of Don't Starve Together versus Don't Starve. In Don't Starve Together, you randomly acquire skins, which you can apply to your character, your character's clothes, or craftable items in the game. It's a really fun collectible system that I love. I'm playing on purpose without skins today, so when you start your game like mine, you don't get confused by the differences. I entered a Clockwork Knight's aggro distance. I currently have 140 hit points. See how one hit takes me down 40 points? That's why I recommend armor and weapons earlier before fighting random NPCs. However, experimenting and paying attention to how much damage you take from each mob is a valuable learning lesson. When you check your map, you'll notice that the science machine shows up. This is so you can return to it easily. Since Wilson is super hungry, tonight is a great night to cook some food on a fire. Cooking food in DST is almost always better than eating it raw. Notice when I check my hit points in hunger when I eat. They are the most common stats affected from eating these basic food items. Easy starter food items you can gather and cook on a fire. For hunger, cooked berries and cooked carrots. Both also receive a little hit point bonus when cooked, but not raw. For sanity, cooked green mushrooms. You take uh, one damage to hit points, which is mild, and those pop up in the evening. Otherwise, they stay under the ground. And for health, raw blue mushrooms. Although you take a 15 damage to sanity, those pop up at nighttime and otherwise stay under the ground. Do you want more info on other food items and crockpot recipes? Comment below and press the like button so I know you're interested in me making a future video. When you craft a new item with a light bulb next to it, you'll notice an increase to your sanity. This is a great strategy to slowly use as you play. Craft new items with your science machine or alchemy engine, both when you need a new item and could use a little jump to your sanity. If you put up your science machine like I did as a matter of convenience, craft a hammer and break it. 
You'll get about 50% of the materials back and be on your way. Wow, we found the eye bone already on day three. This is amazing. But uh-oh, the random generation in the map placed it right next to a clockwork rhino set piece. Yep, that clockwork hits hard. Grab the eye bone and run. Soon you'll hear bouncing approaching and you'll have a fuzzy little companion. His name is Chester and he's mobile storage for you. Be careful in taking him around with you. He has hit points too and can die. Never fear if he perishes though. He'll return to his eye bone eventually, but everything inside him will be on the ground at his death site until you retrieve it. We're looking at the map now to check for where the floored postern is. We have a good amount of materials to start assembling a base. I want to do a little more exploration around that starting zone first though. We want to make sure not to build too close to the mosaic biome. Meteors will hit in that area. And if our base is anywhere near there, bye bye base! You'll know the mosaic biome from loads of stone and flint littered everywhere. And, as the name suggests, a mosaic of random turfs on the ground. That aggressive little bugger chasing us is a merm. They are often found in the swamp, and I think there was a merm house randomly generated over here somewhere. I have a feeling we're approaching the mosaic biome. See all the stone littered around? I also see another fun travel mechanic we're approaching. A wormhole! These are tools to go around from one random biome to another. Like everything else on the map, they are randomly generated. Let's take note of where we enter and see where it spits us out. Using a wormhole hurts a chunk of sanity though. So as always, mind those meters in the upper right. Looking good so far. And there's a cave here too. Awesome. Let's see where it put us. Oh nice. This wormhole is great. It covers a good amount of distance. I'm happy about this. Now time to march back north to the floored postern. This plugged sinkhole is the cave. If you're interested in me covering anything related to caves, leave a comment below and like the video so I know that you're interested in it. Bats come out of the sinkholes at night once you reveal them and I don't feel like dealing with them today so bye bats! I keep encountering things to share on my way back. Check it out, a swamp! I love the swamps. They're very dangerous but full of incredible resources. Primarily because there are lots of aggressive mobs that fight each other. When I can't resist trying to gather all the resources, I call this swamp greed. It gets the best of us. Scrambling to grab resources as tentacles slice through the air, nearby or right under us. Yep. Swamp grade is dangerous, but fun. My main piece of advice for the swamp is avoid unlocking the map in complete darkness. The tentacles under the ground are super deadly, especially when you can't spot them as you approach. First they appear as ripples under the swamp turf. Then if you get closer, a tentacle bulge will emerge. And shortly after, it whips out and strikes at you. So tread carefully in the swamp. When you find a pig head on a stick, whip out your hammer immediately. Pig skins are incredibly helpful, especially for armor. Smash every single one you come across. Here I can clearly show you in daytime the warning signs of a tentacle lurking below the surface. Watch carefully. See the tentacle bulge? Yep, it bulged. I think I found a nice base location. It's closer to beef low than I would ordinarily like, but it's a great spot, so we'll try it out. Let me show you the true danger of the darkness. What's that hissing sound? Oh no! I miscalculated. She got us before we could get into the light. Rest in pieces, Wilson! That was Charlie. She lurks in the darkness and kills anyone without a light source. Most characters can handle one hit from her, but not two. I couldn't handle one because my health was obscenely low. Whoops! Let's just do our walk of shame to the floored postern. See you in a moment, my friend. If you die at night, wait until morning to respawn, especially anywhere without a light source, or Charlie will get you again. However, if you need bone fragments, dying multiple times isn't a bad idea. You leave a skeleton behind every time you die. But notice how our hit points meter is blacked out along the top? Your maximum health lowers more each time you die. There's something you can do to fix that. 
If you want to know more about it, leave a comment below and like the video, so I know you'd like more DST videos. There's my skeleton and my stuff, with obedient Chester waiting. Hold down the space bar to mass collect items and hammer the skeleton, so it's no longer in the way. Now onward to base building! See the red mushroom in my backpack to the right? I want to quickly highlight that you can freshen the stack of edible items by collecting more. First, I'll place the science machine again, which we need to build the second tier of technology, the alchemy engine. The majority of early to mid game items will be unlocked with the alchemy engine. For this, we need boards, cut stone, and electrical doodads. Isn't electrical doodad the best name for a science item? I love Clay, the company who made DST, so much! The boards in stone can be made in one of the new light bulb tabs, Refine. Right now I'm putting a stone fire pit down. These are better than a regular fire because number one, they won't catch your base on fire like an out of control regular fire would, and number two, they provide light to your base at night to keep Charlie at bay. And finally, number three, the pit remains after the fire goes out. Whereas a regular fire will just change to ashes, which if not picked up will blow away in the breeze. Here we have the refine tab, and you can see the boards and the cut stone require quite a few of the raw materials. So you'll want to make sure you're really stocked up when you settle down to start assembling your base. I was lacking stone, so I replenished my resources. Now let's build this alchemy engine! The electrical doodad is under the science tab. To craft two of those, you need two cut stones and four gold nuggets. Crafting these new recipes is helping out my sanity, which is perfect, since I need it. The more insane your character gets, you start to hear and see things, and you can get hurt! If I do more DST content, I'll cover more about that in the future. Is there anything else about DST that you'd like to learn more about? I'd love to hear from you! If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to press the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a wonderful day, my dear, amazing, wonderful friend.